Hello. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating velocity based disturbance in the smoke solver. And that's going to allow you to get a nice swirling motion like in this little play blast I have here. This tutorial, I'm not going to be showing you how to set up um, a smoke solver and get it working. The point of this tutorial is more about getting the velocity based disturbance. So I'm going to go ahead and just dive right into my dotnet. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to look at is the gas disturbance node. Now we have this control field right here and I have a, a field in there called speed. Now this isn't something that Houdini creates uh, with the default tools. This is something that I created myself. Now you're say, you, you may be thinking, well if you want velocity based disturbance then why don't we just put in vel right here. Well that, that is a good idea. It doesn't typically seem to work well and I think it's because the control field needs to be a scalar field and not a vector field. So what we're going to do is drop down a gas match field and we're this is where we create the field that I just showed you. We're going to call it speed and we're going to be matching this to the velocity field. So for the reference field we're going to put vel and as I said it's a, it's a scalar field so we're going to put the rank to scalar. You can leave all the other settings the same. And the next node that we need is the gas analysis node. And like before, we're going to be the, the destination field is going to be speed and the source field is going to be velocity. And we're going to be calculating the length, which will be a scalar field. So we're getting the velocity, we're getting the length of the velocity and that will be a scalar field. And we're going to be using that as a control field. Now, if you actually want to see what it's doing, uh, you can you can drop down this scalar field uh, visualization node and if I play back uh, actually I need to rotate just a little bit uh, here we go you can actually see the the speed field that we've created here and something else that that, that I like to do is to make use of this visualization uh, let me hide this smoke so you can't see it oh, there we go all right, by default, this guide range is zero to one. And I like to come in here and adjust it to get something that I like. And for here, I just, I have four because that's what I like when I originally set the simulation up. And whatever I have this number set to, or this range set to, I typically, that's what I use in the control field. So when I go back to my gas disturbance node, I'm gonna put the control range to zero to four. And if we look at this control field ramp right here, it says the ramp's vertical axis is the strength of the effect and the, horiz the horizontal axis is the value in the control field. So the way that I have it set up now, this will allow for there to be more, um, more disturbance when the velocity is a higher value. And when it's a lower value, you won't have any disturbance. And that way you won't have disturbance happen all the time or disturbance happening all the time, which is what I'm trying to avoid. Now this field, this speed field, not only do I use it for the gas disturbance, but I also like using it for gas vortex confinement and using that as a control field here. You can see here that I have five. That's just because I, I was messing around with the values to get something that I, that I liked. And for my gas turbulence node, I actually like using temperature as a control field, but it's completely up to you, whatever you like. Anyway, these are my settings for getting, um, the smoke in the video that I showed earlier. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.